In this video, we'll be learning how to create your very first Alteryx batch macro step by step. All of that and more. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's understand batch macro from a very simple example. Let's consider a basket that is full of apples. And let's assume that each apple in this basket tastes a little bit different. So the jam that we're going to make from each apple is going to be a little bit different, right? It's kind of going to be the same, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, and let's suppose that we are doing the same series of steps to, to every apple in this basket, right? So we're going to take the apple, we're going to wash it, we're going to cut it into, into nice slices, and then we're going to prepare jam from it. And then we're going to apply jam to a bread and then, you know, give it to a kid or consume it ourselves if, if I'm the one making it. But then you'd want to apply the same series of steps to every single apple in this basket, right? So uh, you're going to take the apple out from the basket, wash it, cut it into nice slices, prepare jam, uh, prepare jam from it, and then apply it to a bread and do it for every single apple. And then you're going to put all these slices of bread together and give it to a bunch of happy kids who would be very happy as shown in this picture to be receiving uh, this bread with uh, apple jam. So batch macro kind of operates in a very similar way. Here we have a data set that has um, different sales data for different dates. We have customer data. We have gender of our customer, the age of our customer, the particular product that we are selling, how much we sold, price per unit, and the total amount. Now, when we group it by different product category, we're going to see that we have clothing, electronics, and beauty. In this video, we learn how we can create a single tool that when run gives us these values for each product category, right? So for each product product category, we're finding out what is the age range, the minimum age range and the maximum age range, how, how many other total customers for that particular product category, how many total transactions they had, uh, what's the total quantity that was sold. Now this is configured using a batch macro. So let's look at how we can configure something like this step by step. All right, let's go ahead and open a brand new workflow canvas. I have provided the link to the data in the video description below if you guys would want to follow along. But again, this is the same retail sales data that I was showing earlier. Uh, if I look at the metadata for this, you're going to see that I have string values for all my, uh, all my column values. Um, some of these are not really string, right? So date is classified as string. Uh, quantity is classified as string as well. So an easy tool for that to uh, for all tricks to recognize the right kind of data for all of these individual columns is the auto field tool. So let me run the auto field tool for all of these columns and see what I get. Okay, so when I run the auto fields tool, I'm going to see over here that uh, the metadata did change, right? Date is still a string value, but I'm not going to use date for the purposes of this workflow. If you want to convert this string to a date value, you can use a date time tool in here. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. Um, so if you look at uh if you look at what we are trying to get to right we'd want to get the maximum and minimum uh age range for each product first right so let's go ahead and filter this for a particular product category and here i'm going to change this product category let's pick one to beauty now if you have used the filter tool before which i'm assuming that you have um what this filter tool is going to do is it's going to classify the data into true and false, right? So um, everything needs to be, everything over here is filtered to beauty and we have the remaining categories over here, okay? Now let's just quickly create uh, some of the metrics that I was showing you earlier, right? So what I'm going to do is create the minimum and maximum um, age value for this product category. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a summarize tool and I am going to plug the age in here. And then what I'm going to do is create the minimum age and the maximum age, okay? So when I run this, I get minimum and maximum age for this particular product category. So we look at the minimum age is 18 and maximum age is 64, okay? Now when I look at the metadata of this, this is all byte, right? So let me just quickly convert this into string values. So I'm going to connect this to minimum and maximum age, and I'm going to convert this into V underscore string for both of these, okay? All right, perfect. Now let me create another column. 
that has that age range in it, right? So I'm going to create a new column. I'm going to call that age range. And this is going to have my minimum age and the maximum age concatenated, right? And I'd want to put a dash in the middle. And there you go. All right. So this is my age range. Now, I don't really need minimum and maximum age over here. So what I'm going to do is put another select tool, deselect minimum age and deselect maximum age, All right? I'm gonna go ahead and run this workflow again. Uh, I get the, I get the age range now for this particular beauty product, right? Now, one of the other things that we were wanting to show was uh, how many customers are there for this particular product category, how many transactions are there, how much we sold, right? So all of these metrics can be calculated by using the summarize tool. I'm gonna to plug in the summarize tool over here, and here I'm going to group by the product category, to look at the total transactions that happen, I'm going to count the distinct transactions. Uh, I also want to do uh, sum of total quantity to understand how much total quantity that we sold. And then um, I also want to look at my distinct customer values. Okay. And when I run this, I get all these values over here. So let, let me just quickly rename this to what I'm looking for, right? So this is total transactions, this is total quantity sold, uh, and this is total customers, okay? Let me go ahead and run this workflow, and this is what I get. All right, perfect. Now I'd want this age range that I got here, and the metrics that I've gotten over here for beauty category to be all combined together, okay? So for that, I can use the join tool real quick and put this in my left, put this in my right. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join by record position, okay? Let me join this by record position over here. And then um, over here, when I run this, you're going to see that the first row that we got from this output got combined with the first row over here. And this is what we got. Okay, now if you look at our final output, that just didn't have product category beauty. That had all the product categories. And if you look at all the product categories over here right now, uh, you're going to see that in addition to beauty, we also have a couple of other product categories, right? So not only beauty, but we also have, um, well, let me connect this to the autofuse tool. In addition to beauty, we also have clothing and electronics. So I'd want, all of this to be calculated for clothing and electronics as well, okay? And this is where the concept of batch macro comes in. So if you look at my Apple example over here, right? Uh, clothing, electronics, and beauty are each apples. And we'd wanna make sure that all the ETL steps that we did, they get applied. And uh, the final table that I showed you is this finished bread, right? So you wanna make sure that that table comes out for each individual apple. And your Apple over here or your product category over here would be your control parameter, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in here and I'm gonna put in a control parameter on the top of the filter tool. Then I'm gonna connect the queue of this control parameter to this lightning bolt. And when I do that, you're going to see that an action tool automatically appears, okay? So what is this action tool going to do? Here I'm going to say that look at the operand and when I look at the operand value right now, that is equal to beauty, right? Operand value is what is entered in this filter tool. And I'd want to replace this value with something else. I want to replace beauty with whatever information that we are providing in our control parameter. How is that going to work? Let's find out in the next few minutes, okay? For now, put your control parameter over here, click on the input tool, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a macro input, okay? So nothing is going to change when I run this workflow. It still has the same data, but the only difference that you're going to see now is instead of the regular input, which showed that this is a CSV file, this now shows a macro input. And then towards the end, I'm going to put a macro output, okay? Now all of this is going to make sense in a second, okay? 
So if you just look at this workflow right now, we have a macro input, we have a macro output, and then we have a control parameter. Macro input is that same data set that we were working with earlier. Macro output is what is coming from the join over here, right? And control parameter is what is being replaced in the filter tool, okay? So I am going to put all of this into a control container or into a regular container and then call this as my batch macro, okay? Now, before I run this batch macro, there are a couple of things that I want to do. I'm going to click on View and Interface Designer, okay? And that opens this window over here. And I'm going to click on this Property Sign. And over here, you're going to see that I can change what my tool is going to look like, right? So right now, my tool is going to look like this. And probably, I'd want a different design for this. I can even export a custom image for this tool. For now, what I'm going to do is have the tool like this. I like this image over here. So now that has been changed. I'm going to click on this and hide this. Then I'm going to run this one more time. Okay, perfect. Now I am going to save this as my BI metric calculator macro. Okay. Now this has been saved and what I'm going to do is connect to my file again. Okay, this is the same file over here. And now what I'm going to do is right click insert macro and have my BI metric calculator macro. Now I'm going to see that there is this inverted question mark over here. And then there is this input over here. Now let's label our macro a little bit better, right? So if we click on control parameter, instead of having control parameter over here, let's say, provide all product categories. These outputs that will be coming in, right? One for beauty, the other one is going to be, uh, I don't know what the other ones were, uh, clothing and electronics. These are going to be stacked on the top of each other, okay? So we may wanna configure how, uh, you know, how the data is going to be stacked on the top of each other. So let's auto configure by name, okay? And then hide this. We'll go back and let's go ahead and save our workflow again. And what's really cool about this is when you save your workflow, you're gonna get a message that your macro was updated and it was refreshed, so just a heads up, which is great because you may be using your macro in here and it might get updated and then the logic might be completely different. But anyway, here we have this macro over here. Now control parameter would be all the product categories that we'd wanna create. So let's group by product categories in here. A good way to understand a batch macro is whatever input that you have in here, that goes in here. And whatever product categories or whatever um, groups that you have, they go into the control parameter, right? So we want everything to be calculated for once for clothing, one for electronics, and once for beauty. And then to, for it to be outputted from this output of the batch macro. Now, when I click on this, you're going to see that we have to specify what the field is, right? So the field is product category, for everything, right? This is also a product category. And now everything is mapped. Let's go ahead and put the select tool in here and let's run the workflow, see what we get. There we go. Now we just have, in addition to the input tool, three more tools and we have our analysis done in seconds, which kind of explains the power of Ultrix. I'd be curious to know what kind of questions you have. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I read every single comment and I try to respond to every single comment. Um, if you haven't liked or subscribed to this channel, please feel free to do so. That really helps me with the algorithm. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.